Bohemian Club is set up in San Francisco in 1872. And basically, this is a club for journalists, for people who are exploring and thinking about ideas, the cool kids, if you will. Ronald Reagan, Richard Nixon, Kissinger is in the club. But the city is no place to forge fraternal bonds. That happens in a hidden forest in Northern California called Bohemian Grove. It's really like the ultimate sleepaway summer camp for rich and famous men. They sleep in tents, they drink heavily, and they also network. Don't let the laughs and liquor fool you. Members gather at the Bohemian Grove to hatch plans that change history. No less than the Manhattan Project was agreed upon here. J. Robert Oppenheimer first breaches the idea at Bohemian Grove. We can thank atomic weaponry and atomic power for what happens at Bohemian Grove. Before getting down to business, the retreat kicks off with an odd ritual. This is when things get weird. The retreat begins with an ornate ceremony called the cremation of care. The idea being that we are here to take the weight of power off of our shoulders. We're leaving behind the cares of the outer world. A boat known as the Ferry of Care contains an effigy in the shape of a body known as the Body of Care. And it is sent across a body of water to these dark, mysterious, hooded figures. This effigy is placed at the feet of this 40-foot owl structure that's covered in moss and leaves, and it is set afire. And so is immolated the cares of the world, and so is sealed a bond of privacy among members. This 40-foot owl statue, this shrine, is so important to these men. They've actually come up with a name for it that has deep meaning for them. They call it the owl. And apparently, the owl speaks with the voice of famed newsman Walter Cronkite, an owl that sounds like Walter Cronkite. Super weird. But that's how the rich and powerful get down. I'm Walter Cronkite, and that's the way it is. The Bohemian Club is still active today, planning who knows what, because remember, what happens in the Grove stays in the Grove. To date, Bohemian Grove has a several decades long waiting list for admission. Wonder when I'll get my invite. But I digress. Talking owls might seem tame compared to this next ritual performed by members of another powerful secret society. Founded in 1832, Skull and Bones will become the first of what will later be called the Ancient Eight Consortium of Yale's Secret Societies. So shrouded in secrecy is the Skull and Bones that when two Bonesmen, George W. Bush and John Kerry, run against each other in the 2004 presidential election, the media pestered them constantly on what was it like in the Skull of Bones, and Zip mums the word, neither of them say a single thing about it. Another thing they're keeping in the vault? the Secret Society's unusual initiation ritual. To become a member of Skull and Bones, it all begins with a ritual that takes place every spring and is known as Tap Night. The men dress up in their suits, and they stand there and they wait. Literally, someone will come up behind them, tap them on the shoulder, and say, Skull and Bones, do you accept? And if you say yes, you're led to an ominous-looking building called the Tomb, and are henceforth known as a neophyte. From the first moment that the neophyte enters the tomb, he's greeted by two members. A bag is placed over his head. They are surrounded by figures in various macabre garb, including that of the devil himself. They are then compelled to strip bare their clothing and physically wrestle with other neophytes. After all the tapping, beating, stripping, and wrestling, the initiate meets his maker, sort of. 
they make you lie in a coffin naked in front of everyone and then offer up a detailed recounting of your sexual history. They then read the oath of secrecy and they drink a red viscous fluid that's supposed to be blood from an upended skull. Afterwards, the pledge is slapped in the face with the devil's tail. To wrap it all up, he kneels before a person dressed as the pope. The pope is seated in a chair in full pope garb. On his left foot, there is a white slipper, and that foot is resting on a human skull. The initiate walks up, kisses the foot of the pope, and at that moment, becomes a bonesman. They are now a member of the Skull and Bones. If drinking blood and foot kissing doesn't sound like your thing, membership does have its privileges. Apparently, if you're a bonesman, you get thousands of dollars upon graduation, access to mansions and different buildings around the country, around the world, and some of the most powerful people in American history have been members of Skull and Bones.